My idea at the time, which I realized now was fucking ridiculous, was to sort of lay over the pot, <laughs> kind of like a cap on a mushroom, <laughs> and just release. Hello, my friends of the psychedelic renaissance. It's Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, and this is Mushroom Spirits and an Amanita Overdose. I recently gave a talk at the Mycelia event on the topic of the Amanita muscaria. Part of my talk outlined the range of effects of this mushroom, from whimsical encounters with mushroom spirits to... not that. In this video, I outline two experiences I had with the Amanita muscaria mushroom that can lead a person to, in the immortal words of Humphrey Osmond, Fathom Hell or Saur Angelic. If you're into this kind of content, please give this video a like and a share, and don't forget to hit that little bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Also, it'd be great to link up on Instagram. Please find me at Psychedelic Historian. With that out of the way, let's get into Mushroom Spirits and an Amanita Overdose. Now with this range of symptoms in mind, I'd like to tell you two stories that I personally experienced that at this point of my journey of working with this mushroom show these two extremes of the Amanita muscaria. Mushroom spirits and the baptism of the insect. The first experience featured a meeting with the Amanita spirits. The second was a total fearful breakdown of my brain's ability to communicate with my limbs. Here's how the first one happened, the fun one. I take Amanita most nights uh, to help with my sleep apnea, but one night I ended up taking a little too much. I went to bed and tried to sleep, but I slowly got that kind of drunk feeling. After a while, that drunk high feeling poured out of me and into the room, and I was able to actually feel every single surface in the room, including every fiber in the carpet. Every grain of wood on the wood paneling, I could feel it. My little kitty cat, Chrysemi, was sleeping next to me. I could feel every micro serrate of every atom on her fur piercing the air. I could feel air. I could also feel her breathing, and it was like standing on a beach on a windy day. A loud laughter <laughs> overtook my brain. The mushroom spirits, they had arrived. I could feel them watching me. Their laughter had eyes. I was a part of the room and they were all just looking at the room. Like they could anytime they wanted to and often have, but I only noticed it because I was on mushrooms. Now one of the things Russians who eat the mushroom have claimed is that the actions they take while under the influence are directed by the mushroom spirits. Can confirm. Now, luckily, the mushroom spirits did not tell me to crush my testicles or go on a long journey. Instead, they instructed me to write a song. Uh, would any of you like to hear it? Yeah. This song, I had uh, started writing it. Eden, Morgan, and our friend Casey, or you might know him as Rhyme Wave, we went down to Southern Oregon to take ayahuasca. I had started this song the night while in ayahuasca, and I never finished it, and the mushroom spirit's like, we need you to finish that song tonight. <laughs> and I'm not the one to say no to mushroom spirit, so. <clears throat> Thank you, you're the first people to ever hear that song. Oh wait, Eden's heard it. <laughs> uh, when I finally fell asleep, the mushroom spirit showed up in my dreams. I was in a house, I don't remember where, but it had some deep meaning for me. I think it was the house I grew up in. Anyway, they were all growing inside the house, everywhere. These big, bright red ones, and the small little knobby red ones. It was fucking beautiful. It was just mushrooms everywhere. It was amazing. Now, I had been taking mushrooms most nights, like I said, and I suppose I had built up a tolerance in my body slowly over time. I think that might be the key to unlocking the full potential of the Amanita muscaria as an entheogen, but I'm not totally sure that more spiritual experimentation must be done. And I think that perhaps missing from all the reports I'd read about the Amanita muscaria is the slow acculturation of the mushroom into the body. But then I had another experience with the Amanita muscaria. 
I had been both drinking and smoking cannabis that night to deal with the hellish exercise that is video editing. <laughs> I again accidentally took too much of this mushroom on top of the alcohol and cannabis before bed. This time, uh, I got a feeling somewhere between nausea and experiencing vertigo. It became more and more difficult to sit at my computer and handle a mouse and a keyboard, and soon sitting up became too much work and I found myself on the floor. The claymation, the eco picturing, grew more and more intense. So this was a muscarin overdose, like those delightful symptoms I was talking about. <laughs> this is what they're like. Soon I had almost no motor function at all. Notwithstanding the ability to wiggle like a worm or really any creature without the benefit of arms or legs. Remember, that rocks. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one way to get stoned. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. So soon I had no motor function at all. And remember how I met that, mentioned that um, muscarin also leads to excessive urination? Like, yeah. Holy shit, I had to pee. <laughs> now, <laughs> I had to get to the bathroom, but I was up in my office, which is quite the distance from the bathroom and includes a long staircase. Now, Eden was asleep and had to be at work in a few hours, so I did not bother to wake her. And plus, like, she's gone through my psychedelic overdose bullshit so many times that I didn't even have my heart to be like, yep, yeah, did it again. <laughs> so. So, <laughs> so I slithered my way down the hallway from my office to the staircase, which is a good 30 foot distance. Then I slithered down my staircase backwards, which seemed never ending and on repeat. This was the macropsia merging with the echo framing. <laughs> I was terrified, wondering how long it would take me to get down the stairs. I eventually made my way to the bottom landing and sort of just threw myself over like a sack of potatoes so that I would be facing forward again. I made my way to the bathroom, but once I got there, realized I have no way of positioning myself on or around the toilet, let alone an ability to stand and aim. The fearful realization that I could end up like Hector Salamanca from Breaking Bad started to spiral me into an abyss of deep fear and terror, as if I had broken some key element in my brain that might never be reattached. I jiggled and squirmed my way into the kitchen and using every ounce of strength and coordination managed to open up the lower cabinet where we keep large pots. I used my shoulder to kind of get her open. My idea at the time, which I realize now was fucking ridiculous, was to sort of lay over the pot, <laughs> kind of like a cap on a mushroom, <laughs> and just release. <laughs> But I did not even have that much coordination or connection between brain and um, appendages. And I still really had to pee. But there was no way of doing so without making a huge mess on the floor. I didn't want Eden to wake up with me, not only dead on the floor, but with a fucking <laughs> puddle of urine. So, I finally decided that I would, as best as I could, slither back into the bathroom and use the linoleum on the floor of the kitchen to kind of catch my shorts to slide them down, right? I would then get into the bathtub, right? That way I could just pee as needed, and then when and if my brain ever came back online, I could just turn the water on and wash everything up, bada boom bada bing, we're good, right? So I'm trying to, sl I'm slithering across the floor, and I get the shorts down to my feet, but I did not have enough motor coordination to actually get them completely off. So now I have this mermaid operation going on where now my feet are now bound together and I'm still slithering across the floor into the bathroom. I didn't even bother trying to get my shirt off because it was fruitless. Anyway, I ended up passing out half naked next to the bathtub. At some point later, I have no idea how long I was laying there, I woke up and had regained some connection between my arms and brain. Yes. I was able to now at least crawl, not slithering anymore, I, I grew up a little bit. I was able to crawl over to the toilet, 
pull myself up, flip my body around, and sit. I finally took that fucking piss. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was so good. I crawled out of the bathroom and towards the bedroom and ended up passing out on, in the living room on my way there. So, what did we learn today? Very different experience from the mushroom spirits and writing songs, right? This time, the Amanita Muscaria had pulled me deep into the center of fear. But as I contemplated it the next few days, it actually felt somewhat like a kind of baptism, like a creepy crawly among the earth, just looking for a safe place to piss without a predator eating them. Or, better yet, a fly falling victim to a dish of milk or water, poisoned by that nefarious mushroom, but somehow managing to escape with its life. The baptism of the insect. So I learned a few things that night. First, do not drink alcohol or smoke cannabis on top of eating Amanita muscaria. You do not need it. The, all those things are all perfectly fine by themselves. Um, in fact, I'm almost positive that it was the mixing of all those things together that caused this re most regrettable night. Second, it's always good to have a sitter. I'm a little bit cavalier with that, but if you're not used to doing stupid shit the way I am, always have a sitter. Third, you're going to be very groggy the next day, so try to plan to have the day off. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you this time, and like always, I'd love to thank you for stopping by. Please give this video a like and a share, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and find me on Instagram, of course, if it all be your will. And until next time, I'm Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by using your brain. And not overdosing on Amanita Muscaria. <laughs>